Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net. It's Saturday the 14th of November. Thanks again for watching. Um, you may well hear a lot of stories coming up in the press over the next few days about cold weather arriving. Yes, temperatures are going to be falling. Um, I don't think it's anything to be too concerned about at the moment. The flow going more into a northwesterly. Um, but um, certainly evidence is building of that temperature drop. This is the predicted temperatures... Uh, from the GFS Ensemble model. Uh, it's for London, but it's quite representative, really, of the whole country following a similar pattern where temperatures pick up this weekend. Yeah, we get a bit of a dip down here heading into uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Then they're picking up again, but then it's this slide away here during the latter part of the week into next weekend um, when things turn cooler. And you can see temperatures really taking a tumble here, uh, getting down to around about uh, 8 or 9 degrees by day. So certainly a downward trend, and it's a trend that's backed up as well by the ECMWF. This is the 850 temperatures, so that's about 5,000 feet up in the, in the atmosphere. Um, 850 is pretty useful because they get rid of some of the noise of the surface temperatures. So they're better as a guide um, of actual temperature. And you can see here that downward trend taking place. But even at the coldest, they're only about minus 5 at 5,000 feet. And that's nothing unusual this time of year. Yes, it's going to be reducing temperatures. It's going to be bringing sleet and snow over high ground. And there may even be a little bit at low levels. But I think the main shock is going to be compared to the weather that we've had recently. And the idea that things suddenly turn much colder, or cooler, I should say. Let's not fall into that cold trap. Cooler, particularly after the milder weather that we've had, is one to take notice of. We've been advising private clients about it for several days now. Um, and I think we can start to firm up on this story. Good agreement as well between the ECMWF and the GFS, as we've just seen, but this kind of confirms it. These are the means of the 500 millibar height, so it's the anomalies running from next uh, Saturday through to Tuesday um, of the following week, so up till Tuesday the 24th. And we've got the ECMWF on the left here. We've got the GFS Ensemble on the right. And what they show us is this ridge developing in the Atlantic. It's that that's causing the cold because we get this uh, trough. There's a resultant trough across the UK and across Eastern Europe. And you see here, look, this is the warm air being pumped north in this ridge. And there then is the resultant trough that occurs across Europe. And it brings us in this northwesterly flow. We can take a closer look at that by uh, looking at the ECMWF. And this is the predicted 500 millibars from the ECMWF. This is from our new premium site, uh, which will be available very soon. And uh, these go forward in 24 hour steps. So 14th of November here. And as I just knock it on for you, you'll notice how uh, that jet stays over the top of us. There's Monday, there's Tuesday. Yeah, we keep the stormy conditions during this week and the unsettled conditions. There's Thursday of next week. Now, notice here by Thursday, the ridge building here across Greenland and this flow digging in uh, into the back of that ridge. There's Friday. The ridge really has become quite a major feature now across Greenland. There's that northerly pumping this cold air down all the time. We've got a southwesterly coming up here. The two meeting through the middle here, strengthening the jet stream. That's a really strong jet stream across southern parts of England on Friday. And then into the uh, weekend, there's Saturday. Jet being pushed ever further south because of the ridge, because of the northerly flow that's coming in at 500 millibars. The jet by then blowing through here. And then through Sunday... There we are, that plunge getting down into the whole of the UK, into Europe. And notice that the air that's flowing in from this is coming in across Greenland, which of course is turning much colder all the time now at this time of year. So any, any air that's kind of arriving from up here is going to be turning colder. And of course that's at upper levels. So what it's doing is destabilising things all the time, increasing the risk of rain, sleet and snow. Monday looks like that sharp northwesterly. That's a real unsettled, unstable northwesterly flow bringing wintry showers across the country for Monday the 23rd and then even into Tuesday the 24th um, low in the heights towards the east strong jet coming down here and uh, developing the jet down here as well and what we've got to watch for is as that jet just pumps in this cold air constantly into southern parts of Europe here we then need to watch for the development potentially of some sort of low feature down here which could then just hang around for a while but what it would probably do 
it's pushed the jet back further north, bring us back into a mild westerly flow eventually. Um, so it hints at just a, a shortish snap of cooler weather. But certainly, like I say, the ECMWF backs that up. Now, if you look at the anomalies, actually, these are the anomalies for the next week from Carsten Housting's site. And again, we're actually pretty warm across Europe. So it shows that this cold air isn't getting into the back end of the week. Here it is, look, the first signs of it across Greenland getting into the western part of the Atlantic into Iceland. It's this that we're looking at moving in during the latter part of the week. Warm across the eastern parts of the state, which is exactly what you'd expect to see with this ridge from the southwest pumping those heights northwards. Remember, we saw that flow then returning back down here, and it's the return flow from this ridge that causes the cooler weather getting into Europe. Pretty warm across Brazil, pretty warm too across the southern and western parts of Australia, and warm again across China, but some real depth of cold still across central parts of Russia and into the far northeast there, as well as the far northwest of Canada. Um, so how do, uh, what does it look like in terms of sea temperatures? Well, we get in a northerly wind, and you might well say, well, why is it that with that northerly flow, you're not really going to town and it being bitterly, bitterly cold? Well, it is going to be cold, but a, a look at the sea surface temperatures kind of sorts that one for us. Temperatures around the UK, sea surface temperatures above normal for the time of year. We're looking at two to 2.5 degrees above normal to the north. Yeah, we've got this colder slot out towards the west, and anything flowing in over here is going to be bringing cooler air at the surface. Uh, and here is our El Ninos. But really the key, these temperatures around UK shores. And if we just look at the actual temperatures, um, UK is down here. This is from uh, the Dutch Washington Wetter Deinst site. And these are the actual sea surface temperatures. So you see here that we've got sort of eight, nine degrees up towards the north of the UK. Um, we've got twos and threes up here, and we've got sevens up here. So anything that kind of comes in from here is still relatively mild right now. So it's going to reduce sea temperatures, but with the air flowing in over the sea, you're still going to be getting sort of seven, eight degrees by day, perhaps even a nine across southern areas. Yeah, northern parts of Scotland may be cooler, but you see, when the showers go through, temperatures will quickly recover with those sort of temperatures, even assuming you perhaps lose a degree or two off these temperatures um, during the week after next, perhaps taking them down to an eight. So even then, coastal area is still going to be eight degrees. Get some snow cover, yes, it will drag temperatures down over the high ground. But you see what I mean about it still not being that cold there. Really, another month and it might have been a different story. Um, so I think it's worthwhile talking about it going cold, but I don't think we need to go to OTT with it. CFS looks like this for the same period. This is the CFS for week one. It's got the lower than normal heights out west, higher than normal heights towards the south. And there's our strong jet, this strong westerly flow. The week two looks like this. This is from the 21st, so next Saturday. Did I mention that was my birthday? Uh, next Saturday through to the 27th. Low the normal height centered up towards the north. There's our trough. There's the ridge look across the eastern states. So there's the trough coming through here. Here is this northwesterly feed. So it goes with the idea of that chilly air being in place. And then for week three, 28th to the 4th of December. Um, like I say, we've got this ridge out here. Here's this hint of some sort of cutoff down here. Ridge off towards the east. And still got this ridge, but it goes back into the more central parts of the state. So it's kind of getting us into that sort of pattern. So the flow, yes, is still cold, particularly across northern areas, not so chilly down towards the south. And as this feature tries to cut off across central parts of Europe, so the jet re-establishes itself, we get a milder flow coming in. And then uh, week four looking like this, ridge gets going again over the states. It tries to bring in more of a uh, west and northwesterly flow across the UK. But what we're tending to find here uh, is that with this building high, to the east of Scandinavia, more of a southeasterly flow across um, uh, uh, to the east of the UK, and our flow may well turn more southerly to southeasterly as a result. And what that probably does is it brings temperatures up across the southern parts, southern half of the UK and Ireland, leaves them probably pretty cool across Scotland. So I think overall, yeah, it looks like we go into a spell of a windy, wintry weather with temperatures falling at the end of this week. Like I say. Get ready for the um, snowmageddon stories all over the press. And I guess snow geese will be getting very excited about this. Um, but we just need to tone it down. It's a normal hit of 
cooler wintry weather and actually if we'd had normal weather so far through October and early November we may not really have been saying much about it it's just that as this northwesterly comes in temperatures are going to be significantly colder than where they have been perhaps by as much as 10 degrees of course though I'll keep you updated throughout and of course Gary will as well here at weatherweb.net you can check out the fast forecasts for details for the coming days um, but I wanted to bring you up to date on that and our thinking behind it and why we're looking at this cooler weather this could all change. These scenarios do throw themselves together through these early stages of the winter months. But what's interesting now is that it's been on several runs. It's across virtually all models as well that it's going for the cooler conditions. So we kind of have, uh, I think we're in a position that we probably have to uh, believe it or at least run with it. Uh, still going to go with the ideal of a mild, milder westerly coming in in December, uh, but of course I'll keep you updated on that. Right, I will leave you with that for now and stop wittering on. Uh, whatever you're doing, thanks again for watching. Keep the sun shining and uh, get the winter woolies ready. And bye for now. <laughs>